uh, just about a year ago up at uh, CPAC in Washington, D.C., Ben Brubeck, who is the uh, vice president of ABC, Associated Builders and Contractors Trade Association, represents uh, folks in the construction business, joined us. We spent a couple of minutes uh, talking about the need for construction workers, folks in the trades, and how much money there was to make. And in addition, we talked a little bit about what could happen to the economy if some of the measures that are that are being floated by folks in Capitol Square were actually enacted. Well, I don't know that either one of us really thought we'd get to this point, but I'm thrilled to say that Ben is joining us. Hey, Ben, thank you for being here. Jeff, thanks so much for having me on the program. It's great to talk to you again. Absolutely. I, I think we ought to do this more than just once a year, but... Uh... Let's <laughs> you got it. Let's talk a little bit about what is being floated up there on Capitol Square. What is of concern to my friends at uh, ABC? Well, you teed this up really nicely. Um, Associated Builders and Contractors it represents uh, commercial and industrial contractors all over the country, as well as in Virginia. And right now, Virginia is controlled fully by the Democratic Party, and they're advancing a pretty radical agenda that will definitely hurt uh, Virginia's economy and the business community, and especially the construction industry. Uh, there have been a number of bills that are, are quickly moving through the legislative process that we're very concerned about, um, specific to the construction industry. Uh, there's also bigger business issues we're worried about. They've talked about gutting the right-to-work law, which makes Virginia uh, a competitive state and an economic powerhouse. Also, a number of other reforms that have the business community very upset. But specific to construction, um, they are attempting to basically ensure that a lot of the future public construction work goes to unionized contractors and union labor. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem in Virginia when just 2.2% of the construction workforce belongs to a union. So we are concerned that out-of-state contractors and and businesses and workers are going to come in and take the jobs of Virginians. And that's uh, that's our biggest concern right now. Wow. All right. So uh, let's talk about the minimum wage angle on this, because we hear from, I think, well-meaning people, people who want to tell me uh, how hard they work. And I would never for a second uh, argue with them that their work is or is not hard. But but we all live in the in the world of hard realities and the economic world and supply and demand. And they're just there are some jobs that uh, in the real world are not worth what the employee thinks they're worth. Am I right? Yeah, there's certainly uh, there's certainly an issue with uh, with minimum wage in Virginia. We've seen that discussed in the committee hearings I've been attending. Fortunately, construction is a high paying industry and, mm-hmm. and a great rewarding career. So we actually don't get wrapped up in the minimum wage issues. Most employees on the construction job site make well over fifteen dollars an hour. And, and even higher than that. For example, in Richmond County, electricians make $31 an hour and uh, uh, get benefits about 46% of that in terms of benefit costs. So um, it's a really high paying industry. Unfortunately, in construction, what they're trying to do in Richmond is require what they call the Davis Bacon Act on public construction contracts. Mm-hmm. They want these prevailing wage laws on all state projects and allow localities to require prevailing wage laws on schools and affordable housing and roads and bridges that the localities are paying for. So what this really means for the average um, listener right now is that Richmond's interested in increasing the cost of construction between 9% and 25% and making sure we have fewer schools, roads, and bridges. And that's really going to make Virginia less competitive economically in the long term. Mm. Now, I, I, I brought up the minimum wage, and I, and I, and I know that uh, it doesn't necessarily apply to a lot of the folks in the construction world, but I wanted to bring it up because the last time you and I spoke, we talk, talked about the need for trained people, and uh, I just wanted you to be able to, to put that number out there. More than $31 an hour, the great benefits, abcva.org, I know, is the uh, the website uh, where folks can go, maybe learn a little bit more, and, and who knows, I, you still have all sorts of training programs available, right? That's right. We have registered apprenticeship programs across the state on, in a variety of trades that will help give people an outstanding career in the construction industry. These are family-sustaining wages that, that you can get uh, and earn while you learn, and you don't have to get into college debt uh, going to these programs. So we have some outstanding programs. The sad thing is that what legislation is proposing is to try to make sure that workers in our apprenticeship programs and members of our company cannot uh, – members of our member companies – uh, and employees cannot work on taxpayer-funded projects. They have to go towards union 
uh, unionized labor and unionized contractors through something called a project labor agreement. And there's a number of bills in the Senate and the House that are trying to push project labor agreements on uh, taxpayer-funded construction projects, and that's going to increase costs between 18, uh, probably 12 percent and 20 percent going forward, which, which again, is a big problem, coupled with the Davis-Bacon prevailing wage issues we talked about earlier. So, uh, really, the, the deck is stacked against free enterprise in Virginia going oh. forward. So, so just so I'm clear, because I, I thought for a moment I, I'm listening to this and thinking, oh, well, everybody's going to do better, right? Because that's the argument we're hearing from, uh, from the Democrats up on uh, Capitol Square. But if they get this stuff through, if we go to this prevailing wage, if we talk about uh, uh, Davis Bacon and the rest of it, then it, it's the cost to those of us who are taxpayers that are going to go, I, I would dare say, and I don't, I don't want to be over the top with this, but they would go through the roof, wouldn't they? It's certainly going to increase the cost of construction, and it's very frustrating uh, for the Virginia construction industry. Like I said earlier, 98% of the industry is non-union. And so yeah. when you have project labor agreements in place, they're going to basically ensure out-of-state union labor and out-of-state union contractors are going to do the work. And we're not surprised by this. We looked at the uh, amount of money that labor unions donated to the Democrats during this election cycle. It was $1.6 million dollars. 60% of that came from out-of-state unions. Wow. So they know that they're basically trying to crack open this market and get this work through basically unfair competition uh, as a result of government intervention. That's incredible. Ben Brubeck is joining us. He is the uh, vice president of ABC, Associated Builders and Contractors. And uh, Ben, give us a sense. Uh, I guess it's crossover day where all of this stuff sort of comes to a head? Yeah, Tuesday is kind of the make-or-break day. Um, we're watching a number of proposals especially in the Senate, um, that have not gotten to the floor yet. Um, so we'll know where some of these bills end up being. On the prevailing wage side, um, SB8 and HB833 are what we're watching. Mm-hmm. And then on the project labor agreement side, SB182 and HB358. Those are bills that we hope that your listeners would uh, call their lawmakers and tell them to oppose as they move through the legislative process. Yeah, so so we do need people then to call their state delegate, call their state senator, and say, "Look, uh, you've got to be on guard for these things, and uh, let's uh, let's let's send them back to uh, to the ash can where they belong." Exactly, and and what what you what the message to, to your lawmakers would be would support fair and open competition, let the best contractors and the best Virginia employees and businesses compete. On yep. a level playing field to win to win contracts and build your schools and your communities. Yeah, and a great point that you raise, and I I, I have to say, it didn't occur to me, but you you uh, really uh, illuminated it for me, and I think for others, the idea that uh, it's money from out of state, it's folks from out of state that would be taking these jobs. It wouldn't be Virginians that would be getting any sort of a a pay increase. This money would go to uh, to out of state concerns, and frankly, could wind up with uh, with a whole slew of uh, our friends and neighbors sitting on the unemployment lines. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, there will be some Virginia uh, union members that would win that work. And, yeah. and look, we think that's great. But there's that the majority will be will be non-union workers from Virginia that get hurt by these policies. So we're definitely uh, frustrated by the direction of, of where things are going. All right. So uh, best website is at abcva.org. Is that where we should be looking? Yeah, that's a great place to find information about uh, careers in construction and kind of learn more about uh, the construction industry and uh, get some updates on where we're at uh, as we track these bills uh, through the legislative process. All right. Well, we're going to do that, Ben. I appreciate you making time for us. I'm hoping we'll see you up at uh, CPAC in a couple of weeks. And like I said, we got to do this on a more regular basis. I, I appreciate you being here. Well, we'll see you soon, and thanks for all you do, Jeff. You got it. That is Ben Brubeck. Ben is the uh, vice president of ABC Associated Builders and Contractors. I think everybody ought to be on a level playing field, don't you? I think everybody ought to be able to say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to bid for that contract. It's like I'm listening to some of uh, some of the complaints people have. Well, I didn't get this or I didn't get that. Did you, did, you, did you put in for it? I mean, are you somebody who has a trade? People sometimes complain about stuff they don't have. Oh, I didn't get this job. Are you are you trained for that job? Well, no. Okay. So you heard Ben talk about the uh, the pay rate for electricians. Now, that's not bad, huh? $31 an hour and then uh, uh, half of that again in benefits. If you are thinking maybe this is something you want to look at, abcva.org, abcva.org. Jeff Katz, News Radio, WRVA.